Today we're going to be learning how to make a post API call in Swift. So I've got a API endpoint opened up here and pretty commonly there's a lot of videos made on how to get data, but we're going to take a look at how to use URL requests to post data. So let's go ahead and open up Xcode and we're going to go ahead and make a playground. We should be able to reason about all this in a playground and you can basically copy and paste that to any project you're working on. I'm going to create a blank playground and let's go ahead and give it a title of a post API call dot playground. I'll toss it onto my desktop and let me just copy and paste in that API endpoint. So sticking with the REST standard, which includes a bunch of different types of HTTP operations, we generally have get to get data, post to insert data, there's put, as well as delete, and a few more. So get gets a lot of coverage and love, as, as I mentioned, and post, not so much. So we're going to take a look at posting. So I'm going to go ahead and create a function called a API call. And the first thing we're going to do is create a URL that we're going to actually post the data to more or less where we're going to make the request to. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the URL I just copied from my browser. It's just a dummy uh, endpoint where you can go ahead and post a title body and I believe a user ID and it'll insert it into, you know, this collection of posts here. So we'll, we'll take a look at how, how on earth this whole thing works. Um, the way that we want to get started, instead of just using a you know data task to get data back, since we're creating a post request, we're issuing a post request, what we need to do is create and set up a URL request. Now, first and foremost, you create this request with a target URL that you intend on you know, sending the request to, and then we need to set, set a few pieces of information on the request. Uh, namely, we want to set the method, the body, and any headers that you know the endpoint requires us to use. And then we want to make the request uh, itself, and you know what, what we're going to get some data back from it. We want to make sure we decode that into JSON and make sure that you know whatever we get back is valid. So let's go ahead and do all of these pieces piece by piece. So request dot HTTP body is pretty simple. Our uh, HTTP method, let's actually start with. It's a string, and we're just going to put post in here since it is a post request. The next thing we're going to do is on this request, we're going to set a value for a particular HTTP header. And generally, the most common header which is uh, required is content type. And we're going to be working in JSON. So the value here is going to be application slash uh, JSON and pretty commonly if you have API's that require some type of authentication you might have previously seen things like bringing in a header for you know a authorization token which allows you to use OAuth etc etc I'm not going to digress too much but takeaway here is headers are pretty commonly used the next thing that we want to do in here is do a HTTP body now in a post request you send a body of data which is JSON that you encode into data so if we start typing request.http body, you can see here that is a nullable data. So what we want to do is we want to create a dictionary and then convert it into you know, data somehow. So we're going to create the body right above this. And I'm going to go ahead and say that it is a string and maybe any hashable just like that. And we'll go ahead and create this dictionary like so. Now, if memory serves, the three things that we need to supply this uh, request is a title, a body, and a user ID, where title and bodies are string, and user ID is an integer. So let's go ahead and do this. So for a user ID, we're simply going to pass in one. We're going to have a title in here, and let's go ahead and give this title a title of uh, hello from iOS Academy. Just like that and we need one more thing which is going to be the body now the body i'm just going to go ahead and type something and copy and paste it the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and i'll just copy and paste this a few times so we have a nice lengthy body that should be sufficient and now that we have this body which is more or less just a dictionary what we need to do is we need to try to use json serialization and get data from a particular json object 
So the JSON object we're, we're going to use is the body, and the option here is to allow fragments. And this is going to be, you know, uh, try optional because this this entire conversion of a JSON object to data can throw an error. Generally, it won't, assuming your body is, you know, properly formatted. But we're just going to use try optional to ignore that error in case, you know, it does occur. So now that we've created the request, the next thing that we need to do is actually issue this request. In other words, hit the API. And this is pretty similar to how we do a normal GET request with, uh, you know, a URL session. We use the shared instance of it. Now, instead of saying uh, data task with a URL and completion handler, we're going to say data task with a request and a completion handler. So we're going to use this one here. We're going to pass in the request. And the completion handler should hopefully look familiar if you've made any API call previously. We get some data back, a URL response that we're going to ignore, and a error. The first thing that we want to do in here is make sure that we have data. We're going to unwrap it. We're going to validate that the error, in fact, is nil. And assuming both of those things are good to go, this is the point where we want to go ahead and convert the data into JSON, which is you know what we got back as a response. So I'm going to go ahead and say response is going to be JSON serialization. We're going to go ahead and say this is a JSON object from or with data, I should say. And we're going to say fragments allowed here as well. So allow fragments just like that. And if I'm not mistaken, this can throw an error. So we're going to say try. If an error occurs, we're simply going to print it out down here like so. Now, the reason we're doing this instead of using codable is because I actually don't remember the type of uh, you know, uh, JSON that we're going to get back as a response, and we need to know that to create a related codable object. So finally, we're going to go ahead and say task.resume, and that'll actually kick off this API call. So assuming all this is going to work, we should see, you know, the response here, and maybe I'm going to prefix this with success. We'll go ahead and interpolate the response JSON like so. Hit command shift Y to pop up your bottom console here. And we're going to go ahead and hit the play button. And before we do that, make sure you call your actual function here, which we have called API call. Let's be a little better about this. Let's say make post request, probably a much more appropriately named function. Copy and paste that there and boom, make sure everything's compiling, no build errors. Go ahead and hit that play button and let's hopefully see, you know, either our error printed out or we will see uh, our success printed out. So bear with me here, the playground loves to be a little slow and sometimes actually the playground doesn't even cooperate in a reasonable amount of time. So we're going to copy and paste this into a Xcode project if it decides to take too long. I'm going to go ahead and print here. We're going to say making API call so we can iteratively know, you know, what step we're on. We'll say API call dot dot dot. And all right, looks like it was pretty slow, but actually we did get success here. There is a body. There is the ID. That it created and one thing I'm not actually positive about is I wonder if I refresh this if we actually see that post here so if we scroll all the way down I wonder if we see a 101 post 101 which should be our uh, iOS Academy posted uh, posted data so it looks like I don't see it here I wonder if it's just trimming it because it's too many posts but I digress if you want to go ahead and actually convert the body to a reasonable you know codable object we can go ahead and create a struct called response which is going to be codable let's paste this stuff in this is going to be a string you want to make sure once again that your uh, actual properties in here match up we're gonna say this is a let get rid of that user ID is an integer the title here is going to be a string and finally this ID which presumably is the post ID is also an integer so now instead of you know decoding to just raw JSON what you can go ahead and use is say JSON decoder we're gonna use an instance of that and we're gonna say try to decode a uh, instance of response.self from the data and once we have that response we're gonna go ahead and print it out so let's go ahead and give this a try one more time. I'll hit Command K to clear my console. I'm gonna stop the output here. We'll go ahead and hit the play button one more time. And we should once again see success. The only difference being is the fact that we now convert the return JSON into a you know native uh, struct object with the codable protocol. 
If you're not familiar with this, I've got a separate dedicated video on Codable. Take a look at that. That's all I've got for you guys today. Post requests are very common. Uh, get comfortable with them. This URL request object has a bunch of other properties on it as well. So you can set things like, you know, how long until the request times out. If you want to customize this, perhaps we'll say 20 seconds. Uh, but you guys hopefully get the point. This is the fundamental of making a post request. I'm going to be doing videos on puts and deletes as well. They're pretty similar, but I think there's you know some value in seeing any, any nuances and differences. So that's all I've got. Drop a like down below if you haven't done so already. Subscribe to the channel if you're into Swift and iOS and want to stick around. Sadly, I think 50% of you guys don't actually subscribe, so definitely subscribe. You know, Spread the word. Appreciate the love. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next video.